Welcome to the panel called Self-Determination and Service Providers Advocating Through Life's Journeys. The speakers are self-advocates and one waiver support coordinator. The names of the self-advocates are Rebecca Crosby, she goes by Becky, Cody Bowman, Sarah Canali, Robin Stosky, Michael Bonner, and the name of the waiver support coordinator is Ryan Chandler. And my name is Natalie Jean and I am the moderator. Self-determination is about taking control of your own life and making your own choices about how you want to live your life. The self-advocates on this panel are going to be sharing their insights and experiences about self-determination and providers. And Ryan Chandler, the waiver support coordinator, will be sharing his perspective from the point of view of a waiver support coordinator. Before each panelist speaks, I just wanna share a few pointers that the self-advocates have identified as important things to remember. Services can change and evolve. So what you need today may not be what you need a month from now or a year from now. And what you needed yesterday may not be what you need today. It's a dynamic process. You must advocate for the services and supports that you need. And something that is going to help you do that is knowing the program rules and the flexibility that is available. Ask questions and be persistent. If you didn't understand, they probably didn't explain it very well. So keep asking until you understand. It is important that your service providers and your waiver support coordinator, who is also a service provider, know about you. Part of advocating for yourself is educating providers. Who better than you than to educate providers on your needs and preferences? Explain what you need and how you need it done. What may seem like common sense to you may not be common sense to the provider. And you may need to explain to them what's going on inside your body to help them understand why something is important. Educate them in the best way that you can. If you can't explain it verbally, then maybe you can write it, or maybe you can show them what you mean. Self-advocates look for information in lots of places. Sometimes you need to be creative in meeting your goals, and your waiver support coordinator can help you be creative. You'll hear from Becky later about how she uses Facebook. It's important to know who to contact in your regional office if you need assistance. Your waiver support coordinator is always the primary point of contact for assistance, but after that, if you still have questions or issues or concerns, you can reach out to the regional office. If your issue is about your waiver services, you can ask to speak with the waiver work stream lead. Or if you want to speak to the head of the region, you can ask to speak to the regional operations manager. And if you don't know who you should speak to, you can call the regional office and ask and someone will direct you. Now Becky's gonna start off with her perspective. So hi everybody, my name is Rebecca Crosby. I am here in the Tampa area. And so that you know a little bit more about me, I have a master's degree in social work from the University of Central Florida. I'm a self-advocate. And recently this year, I started working on a health coaching certification, which I will be completed as of this Sunday, May 24th. Um, so what new celebrations and challenges have I had this year? Well, I just mentioned one of my celebrations, which is that I will become a certified uh, health coach as of May 24th. So this coming Sunday, yay. 
Um, other new celebrations, um, starting out on a couple of different um, employment journeys, I did also receive my temporary life insurance uh, license. So trying that out. Um, got a new puppy this year. She's awesome. Her name is Anna. And training her to be a service dog for me. So she's a year old. So she's just learning. But that's some of the great things that I've done this year. As far as celebrations, challenges, I would say that I'm still going through some health stuff, but that's kind of normal for me. I do have cerebral palsy. So as I've gotten older, um, some of my challenges continue. Some of mine change. Um, so this year I'm still dealing with some issues that I'm having related to uh, spinal fusion surgery that I had as a teenager, but that is now causing me some breathing issues and things of that nature, but I'm working through that. And the health coaching certification is helping with that because I'm learning new ways of coping. So that's a great thing, um, which leads into the next question, which is how do I handle problems that arise? And that's one of them. Um, my boyfriend is a great support system for me, as are um, my friends and neighbors. Um, also, um, I look back to my social worker training. That's always a great thing to have, to know how to speak up for myself as a self-advocate. Um, <clears throat> also, um, being determined, I think, is a great thing. I never let anyone push me around. Um, it's one thing to be um, assertive. It's another one to be aggressive. And I think it's important to know where that line is. But I think I have done pretty well at maintaining the assert assertiveness line. Um, but as far as speaking up and um, being creative, one of the things that I do, and I've mentioned it before, is I frequently use um, social media. So if I have a problem, it's a lot easier to reach out to the, um, between Instagram and Facebook, about a thousand or so um, followers that I have and say, hey, I have this going on, what's worked for you? Or do you know anybody? Um, that's, that's pretty helpful. Um, I've reached out to my support coordinator pretty often, friends, family, um, like most people would, I think, when they have an issue. Um, um, I always find that the, the first things that come to mind are typically the, the easiest solutions. Um, my, my service dog, is, she's, she's definitely a, a great new creative solution that I've I found this year and that came about I was actually just looking if I could find a service dog that was going to be great but um, the way that came about was we were actually my boyfriend and I just looking to find a pet and um, so we went through a, a rescue agency and um, as I was filling out the application we actually filled out the application believe it or not for her brother and the rescue agency got back with us and as it turned out her brother had been adopted by another family but she said that his uh his sister was available and when she read our story and my story in particular being that i have cerebral palsy and i have some some physical challenges she thought that anna who ended up being our our fur baby um had the right temperament that she would end up being a good service dog for us. And so um, she, she set us up with a temporary trainer um, that we worked with a few times, um, free of charge, which was great. Um, and we've, we've loved our fur baby ever since, and her name is Anna. And if you follow me on social media, I'm sure you've seen her, but she's awesome. She just celebrated her first birthday with a cake that she very much enjoyed. Um, so yes, she is very much a creative solution and she is the sweetest dog ever that just loves me unconditionally and um, one of my favorite things that she does is if I'm ever cold or 
if I'm having muscle spasms in particular, she knows as soon as I lay down just the right spot to lay at to to calm those, which is awesome. And that was something that we didn't even have to train her to do. She just figured out because she knows me that well. So that was an awesome thing to find. Um, but let's see, moving on here. What are the keys to having a good uh, waiver support coordinator? Okay, so I chose mine based on when I first came to Tampa from Orlando, I was actually thinking of becoming a waiver support coordinator and that's something that I still haven't ruled out based on my social work background. So um, I chose mine based on the fact that she is actually one of the statewide trainers for support coordination. So she and I have actually developed a great relationship over the last eight years or so. Um, but we do, we do have pretty good communication. We have had our our issues here and there, but that's, as I said, she knows that, that I won't take, you know, the first solution that's, that's given to me, and it, and it is give and take with support coordinators, so there is a dialogue that has to happen when there's issues with uh, personal care assistance or budgets, or I might say, um, for example, um, I need, I, I would rather not put this money into my trust. I would rather um, keep this money to pay a bill um, rather than to have to put money into a trust that I can't access. You know, can we do that and um, maybe access funds for something else another way? And, and that's just a, a conversation that we have. But luckily, she respects me enough to to have that dialogue with me. Um, and what qualities do I look for in a provider? So with that being said, where it has to be a dialogue with your support coordinator, again, it also, you also have to have that dialogue with your, with your providers and, and your personal care and support staff. So for me, I live independently on my own with my boyfriend and my fur baby. So, um, and I'm, as you can tell, very talkative, very open. <laughs> so you have to be comfortable with that. Um, I, I'm an open book, and so the things that happen in my home are going to work the same way. I, I like to be, aside from this, this COVID-19 situation that we're in now, I'm a person that likes to be out in the community. I advocate a lot. I'm a girl, so I like shopping. <laughs> I work. Um, so I'm, I'm not a person that likes to, as much as I might be physically sitting on my butt, um, <laughs> I don't like to hang around doing nothing. So um, you have to be comfortable with road trips. Um, you have to be comfortable with a lot of people either being on the phone or um, physically being in my space. And you have to be comfortable just being one of them. And if you're not, it's not gonna work. So um, you have to kind of roll with the punches when there's there's issues and realize that it's it's not personal with you. It's just, we, we can be, we can hang out and we can have fun but at the end of the day, a job is a job. And as much as I want it to be comfortable for you as a worker, um, a job is a job and you have to complete your duties and then we can have fun. And if all else fails, <laughs> I, might, um, I might cry or I might, um, I might have my little fit for a moment, but, <laughs> Uh, at the end of the day, um, that's when I, I fall to my, my friends, my family, um, anybody that will listen and say, listen, I have this going on, can you help? And I'm still here, so I made it somehow. And um, I made it. <laughs> so I hope that helps. But if you have any questions, I am happy to give you my contact information or find me on social media. And I'm happy to um, 
have a conversation and hopefully help you out. And now Cody is going to share her perspective. Um, hi, my name is Cody Bowman. I live in Sarasota County. Um, the first question is what new life celebrations and challenges have I had this year? Um, other than COVID-19, <laughs> um, I guess last, uh, I'll be honest, last year I did have um, a major celebration. I purchased my first car in September. Um, I have had my license, my driver's license since 2007. And I bought my first car, a 2020 Toyota Corolla in September. So that was a dream come true for me. Um, so that was huge. I haven't really had anything this year, um, but the year's not over. So um, I'm actually... I take that back. I'm actually a senior um, at the University of South Florida. Um, I go to the Sarasota campus. I actually became a senior after the spring semester. So hopefully I will be graduating next year with my Bachelor of Arts in Professional and Technical Communications. I want to go into marketing and promotions. <clears throat> so, um, and with that, I haven't decided what I want to do with it yet, but I enjoy advocating for people with disabilities. So the possibilities are endless there. The next question is how do I choose the right provider for me? Um, I, I actually thought of this question um, about five years ago, I moved into my own apartment on my own for the first time. I, up until then I had lived at home with my family um, I didn't have any providers. I, I'm, let's say, a very independent, um, extremely independent. And um, I was born with spina bifida and I use a wheelchair, but um, I do pretty much everything on my own. And so when I moved out on my own, um, I became eligible for med waiver services. And I had to choose providers, um, a support coordinator and a supported living coach. Um, and the supported living coach that I chose um, was somebody that I had already known. Um, I kind of knew people in the developmental disabilities community and some providers because my mom is a CNA and she's worked um, in the same circles as well. Um, and so I chose a support coordinator as well that I had already known. Um, so that worked out for me. Uh, I think it, it's important to choose a provider that listens to you, um, knows your abilities, uh, lets you be as independent as possible but is there if you need help? Um, which leads me into my next question. At what point do I consider firing a provider? Um, I wanted to talk about this because I actually had the unfortunate task of firing my first um, supported living coach. Um, she, we were, like I said, we were friends before she was my sport living coach and I was already familiar with her. And, um, after a while, I just, uh, I, I already have a mom. I don't need a second one. And she became, she kind of treated me like she was my mom. I'm 33 years old. You know, I don't need a mom. I already have one. And, um, there was one particular incident where I, it was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, I had wanted to um, get a cosmetic surgery um, that would enhance my quality of life. And she was totally against it. My support, co my support coordinator and her um, would try to persuade me not to get it done. Um, I don't, I don't really know why they just 
treated me like they knew what was best for me. And I, but I was adamant that I really wanted this uh, cosmetic surgery. And um, they, <laughs> they, she just, um, she didn't think it was a good idea for me. And I was trying to think of my future um, and, you know, what I was going to be like in the future. And uh, for her to persuade me to do something that I, I'm adamant that I want to do, you know, um, if I want to do, I'm the kind of person that if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. And um, so that right there, there were, there were things leading up to it that I just decided that she wasn't the right provider for me. Um, I wanted somebody that let me be independent, was supportive, um, but wasn't trying to run my life um, and be a second mom, <laughs> basically. So I um, let her go and I chose a different provider who is just more like my best friend than a supported living coach. Um, she's there if I need her. Um, she'll remind me to pay my rent or, you know, um, things that she has to do, um, as part of her job. But I basically, I, I call her when I need her basically. Um, and she's, she's there when I, if I need her for something. So that's nice. Um, <clears throat> my last question is, um, something that I've also been pretty, um, I guess strict about um, setting boundaries when it comes to family involvement and services. Uh, like I said, I moved out on my own about five years ago and you know, my mom always took care of everything. And so when I moved out on my own, um, I had to make sure that, you know, my support living coach and my support coordinator, they weren't, um, running and telling my mom everything, you know, and I tell my mom stuff on a need to know basis. Um, so, uh, you know, this is, um, it's about taking control of my own life. And so that's, that's really important to set the boundaries and, you know, just, uh, let your, you know, independence speak for itself. Um, it's taught me, a lot of responsibility, taking care of things on my own. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a learning process. Even five years later, I'm still, it's hard to set boundaries uh, in certain things. But um, as far as like services, um, my mom is like, she's gotten better about it. You know, she's like, I know where you're at, you know, you're safe. And, you know, um, she trusts me to take care of what I need to, so. Um, and that's all my questions. Does anybody have any comments? And so identify with a lot of what Cody said, just about not needing a second mother. You know, I'm 40 and I still deal with that. Um, yeah. Almost 41 at this point and I'm still dealing with that issue. So you're absolutely right about setting boundaries. That's, that's so important. That's something that I'm continually doing. Yeah. Um, especially because, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm so great at, at you know, it, it's so easy for me to make friends with my providers, even if they don't start out that way. But sometimes they um, will confuse that relationship and think that um, because I might be friendly with them, that that doesn't mean that they need to be professional. And that's something that I need to kind of work on a little bit, admittedly. Um, I do my best at it, but um, that is something that um, is a little bit challenging is, is that line between, um, because I do need help with the most personal of tasks. Where does the, the um, I need you to, understand this on a personal level so that you understand where I'm at, but um, we need to be, there needs to be a professionality line as well. 
because I think sometimes people will take advantage because they think, oh, well, I know this, this, or this about her, um, or she needs me for this, so I can get away with doing that. I understand that because you need them to do the job like one day I have like we just sit and play with our phone yeah. not even do what they need to just supposed to be doing so I understand and now Sarah is going to share her perspective hello everyone I'm from Helens County which is central part of Florida I'm a student at South Florida State College and going for graphic design. I'm also an independent contractor of Puffy News. I have several palsy and processing disorder. The challenge I have is when people are talking too fast, it's hard to follow what they're saying. To improve that, I wear a FM system to help me hear this speaker. All my life, it has been a challenge to show my abilities. People would misjudge me by my disability and not see the whole picture. Then I have to educate others how to focus on the abilities, not the disabilities. My life, life celebrations are, I'm a sophomore of South Florida State College in a presence list. I'm in our club and I designed a logo for the club's t-shirt. I only have two classes left before AA degree after 10 years in college student. <laughs> I try to use my reacher as a adaptive tool for sidewalk chalk, but it failed. Then I research again for adaptive tool for chalk there are not many out there other than hardware goes on to wheelchair. That's when I found walkie chalk. Walkie chalk gave me the ability to give me access from my wheelchair. It allowed me to draw from my wheelchair and gave me independence as well. I thought my sidewalk chalk years were over, but not anymore. I think this could be a great adaptive pool tool for people with disabilities, especially physical disabilities. Students with disabilities could interact with chalk with, along with their peers. The walkie chalk company asked me to be their special needs ambassador in summer 2016. I advocated by sharing my story on Facebook. It went around the world. People thought it was a great idea and it brought attention to the disability community. The challenge I have is to work on my gain strength from my surgery two years ago and maintain my functioning skills in physical therapy. Where I went to physical therapy for 10 years closed unexpectedly. It was a struggle to find physical therapists at first in but then found one to settle down with. I learned it takes accuracy in physical therapy besides educating your disability. A therapist could stretch you in a wrong position and it's up to us to speak up. 
I reach out to Lakeland Regional on Facebook to see if they have physical therapists new cerebral palsy. I didn't expect much, but they contacted me and said there was pediatric physical therapist who knew about CP and she had treated some adults. Then I found a PT who knew my doctors were, so it was like everything had connected the dots. It was a long drive, but it was worth it. I signed up with MTM, where we were able to get gas replacement from Medicaid. I had good experience at Lakeland Regional, and they educated my caregiver on home exercise program. The reason PT had to educate my caregiver how do the home program exercise because it, my grandma had quad bypass on September 16th. It was a big challenge to position that caregivers do the personal care and it was critical that they do personal care on a daily basis. It was eye-opening how many hours I really needed it because my grandma was not able to do the care at all. I had to write what I do during the day and being transported places like school and therapy. For other family members, sometimes I have to stop to explain and educate my disability because not all my family members are living with me. For my friends, we learn from each other, provide, acknowledge, resources, and we learn on social media. Having friends make us we are not alone. We all go through similar disabilities or experiences. Some of my friends are not disabled. So sometimes I have to educate and it's good for them to ask me questions so they can learn about my disability. For my providers, I verbally give them instructions how to handle my care and medical equipment. What qualities I look for a provider who is considered honest will let me make my own decisions where I want to go, not always on their phone while they're working with me and they must be background checked. For my safety, they must be on time as well. Being self-advocate is important to be able to speak up for what you need, not only just for waiver services, but for school work in the community as well. Self-advocate also helps other people with disabilities. The creative ways I've learned is to ask my friends who had similar experiences with disabilities and what they went through for advice. Once I followed their advice and still having trouble with agencies or services, I contact many Whitehead and Megan Kirkley, who are the program administrator of for CDC Plus. Having good support, having good support team and being persistent leads into the game plan. Having the support advocate alongside of you while being self-advocate helps also. Like my grandma does 
the phone calls because of my processing disorder, but I can do my own emails. Being consistent, determined, and not giving up will keep you in the game to overcome challenges, get involved organizations, get involved organizations, meeting people with experiences, and getting to know each other helps us understand, become better advocates. And we're on par with people with disabilities in the same. We need to stay visible so the community will understand us. We all have something to contribute to our society, even if it takes us longer to reach our goals. Sarah participated in Miss Wheelchair Florida this year. It was held in Orlando, Florida, and her platform was related to personal care providers and having the funding in order to pay them higher wages. I started joining Miss Wheelchair Florida 2013, but I Made a lot of good friends like Cody and Rebecca Crosby. And, <laughs> and we learned different workshops that helps us to be better advocates. And there's always third round judging. But what I always liked about Ms. Real Church, I always made friends and I learned a lot of things from them. And I came in second one up in 2014. And that's, I haven't come any place since then, but that's okay. That's how I learned. Like, I made a lot of different friends each year I went. And this time I went Miss Wheelchair 2020, which I had a great time because I met more individuals that had several palsy. And we had a lot more comments. So it was like, we kind of were all the girls I met throughout the years. We joined like a sister group. It's kind of hard to explain. Yeah. It's like we formed to be more than just a friend. Yeah, yeah. So. Yes, I miss it. I haven't been back in a few years, but hopefully I'll get my health under control a little bit more this year. I'm, I'm under pain management now, so hopefully I'll, I'll get that under control and I'll be able to come back next year. Yeah, I, I want to come back. Um, I'm just focused on school right now, so hopefully I'll be graduating next year. And That would be awesomeness. Does anybody want to add anything? I think just, just repeating and... and um, reinforcing what everyone else has said about just just mutual respect and making sure that providers are on time making sure that you each know what's expected of you as far as setting boundaries setting ground rules about what sarah said about having them not be on the phone at all times um making sure that you let them know that you know hey you're appreciated i need you here but this is what I need from you, and this is what you can expect from me. I'll respect you and your time. Um, you know, you'll start at this time, you'll end at this time. Um, you know, I'll, I'll respect that you're using your, your gas money and your, your physical energy to help me do what I need to do. But I need you to do this for, for me on your end. That's really, really important. And now for Robin's perspective. Hi, my name is Robin. I'm from Tampa, Florida, as part of the Sun Coast region. And I have been on med waiver for since uh, 2005. I just wanted to share with you a little bit about my perspective and journey through uh, being a self-advocate and the many obstacles that I have faced that have turned into opportunities. Uh, one of the biggest celebrations and challenges that I have had this year um, is 
overcoming a lot of uh, changes that have taken place. Um, one being that last year I moved uh, across town in Tampa to my own apartment uh, and work full time at the YMCA. I've been with the YMCA for 14 years. Uh, so this will be going on year number 15. And two years ago, I took on a position as a full-time staff member at the Y as a membership experience advisor. And that has been uh, great, but there has been a lot of um, challenges and struggles with uh, working full-time and uh, keeping my benefits of Social Security as well as, um, you know, making sure that while I work full-time, um, for me, uh, as an accommodation, full-time being 30 hours, that I can maintain my health and safety, as well as coordinating schedules with uh, providers, that I can get to and from work on time, and that... I, um, the accommodations at work fit my needs as well as balancing um, my many health changes as I've been fortunate uh, in 2018 to undergo uh, five surgeries to remove a large portion of the spasticity in my body. So this year has really been a um, means of working physically on rehabilitation to get stronger as I was had to overcome a lot of weakness as well as I've been fortunate this year to uh, not have um, so much seizure activity that things were a lot more controlled and uh, I thought I think that was brought upon by um, predictability um, also this year, um, I've had the great opportunity to go to Jacksonville on a number of occasions and take part in their neuro recovery program, as well as their robotics rehabilitation program. Uh, one of the things that I see in uh, the qualities of a uh, provider um, is the importance of, of reliability, um, responsibility, um, being on time, um, getting the job done, um, seeing that um, my own sa uh, safety and health is of first and foremost their importance, as um, well as helping me be a productive member of society. Um, with the providers. Um, I've had the same provider for the last year. And one thing that I've had to realize uh, first and foremost is uh, the provider has um, not only a responsibility to me, for, to me as uh, supplying services, but um, also that um, for many providers, they have uh, family and uh, responsibilities themselves outside of work. Um, so we have to be open and honest with one another in communication of our, our, our expectations of each other, as well as um, making a schedule that works for both of us while keeping um, everything that I need to do um, on track and meeting doctor's appointments and different obligations as well as giving the provider time for their family and their needs as well. Uh, so it's a balance. It needs to be uh, one of um, understanding of one another and you're truly never going to understand one another unless um, you communicate those things first and foremost because really you can never um, fully understand what a person is thinking or perceptions or ideas that they may have 
uh, until you um, talk with them. Um, and one thing that I've come to realize most of all is uh, sometimes they don't know necessarily our needs and our wants and uh, what we need because and how we're feeling because they don't live inside of our body. So we have to be very um, transparent and upfront with um, what um, we need. But there also has there to some degree there has to be an amount of flexibility. But there also there has to be a great amount of accountability and predictability. Um, so that is very important. One thing uh, with um, my care is, um, and that I've always strived to be, is to be a doer rather than a bystander. Because as a per, um, from a consumer standpoint is, I, I wanna learn. And I also not only wanna learn, but I wanna educate at the same time. And I think the same goes for the provider as well. Is, you know, I'm on a journey of not only advocacy, but independence. And I want to be able to um, know and share my rights and my responsibilities and also gain access and knowledge to um, my resources to better myself and uh, educate myself to what's out there, uh, whether it be um, courses I could take to better my employment or um, you know things that uh, could help in my medical treatment or um, just overall being active in my community. Um, and I think that goes the same thing with the provider and consumer relationship is um, for a provider, um, for many of us, they are teachers. Um, you know, they're here to work themselves out of a job, whether it, you know, I may not physically be able to do the laundry or may need assistance doing the laundry, but I can help fold the laundry. Um, I may not be able to cook safely or um, do other things, but I can assist and help as much as possible. And I think uh, working together and stressing teamwork is of utmost importance because, um, you, you know, while the provider is working for you, I think you should be working as a team with them. And this came into play a lot when uh, this year I changed support coordinators. Uh, I didn't change support coordinators because there was anything wrong with the one that I currently had. I was just exploring my options um, in many means of actually thinking at one time of going to CDC plus but realized when it came down to educating myself about the program, that that really wasn't something for me. Um, it's not that it wasn't a good program or is a good uh, is not a good program. Um, it's just something that didn't really meet um, my uh, busyness of my schedule and the amount of responsibility that I wanted to take on at the moment in addition to um, meeting my medical needs and my work schedule and other obligations that I had. Um, learning to do for yourself and taking the fall. Um, the only time we ever fail is when we don't get up. And sometimes, you know, for me this year, it was getting a new support coordinator we really needed to get to know each other at first. She didn't know much about my case. I didn't know much about how she worked. Um, also with the surgeries of and rehabilitation, um, follow up of that, um, you know, um, th some things are gonna work and some things are not gonna work. Some things in the schedule are gonna work. 
some things are not. It's going to be some trial and error, um, and some things go well and some things don't. Um, but we need to be open to learning from those experiences and um, use them as uh, knowledge for not only the present but the future. Um, making a move and exploring your options. Uh, that has been very much a very integral part of this year. And like I explained before, um, making the move of um, taking the advancement to why, um, exploring my options of, you know, what may, may be some advancements that I can challenge myself to advance further, um, how I can grow from, you know, what I've um, already accomplished, how I can be a better self-advocate, how I can um, pursue um, a greater journey of independence. Um, it's all about knowing your resources, your rights, and your responsibilities. You know, outside of um, the iBudget and APD, there's many resources out there to help you reach your goals, aspirations, and your dreams. You just need to find them. And sometimes um, you learn from each other. Um, some of your best resources are networking with other people who are going through the same thing with you uh, as you um, that have been through the same thing as yourself. Um, and just realizing that, you know, um, we're all in this together. Um, also finding the resources that are there to, you know, maybe help you overcome an obstacle in the workplace or, um, you know, reach the next step of, uh, advancement in a goal that you have. Um, what are the keys to keeping good providers? Um, communication, 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 and I'll say it again, communication. Nothing is ever going to be perfect, but communication is key. To be open and honest, and like I said before, they don't live inside your body. So you need to talk to them about what's going on, what your expectations of them, what your expectations are of them, and what their expectations are of you. And get a clear guidance and understanding. Um, there's one thing to remain flexible, um, and um, then there's another um, versus um, having that degree of uh, predictability and it needs to be an even match. Um, there's also um, a degree of uh, understanding that needs to take place of what um, you need and why you need it and um, not wavering for, from it um, in a lot of measures. Um, but in the same token, to realize that these providers are people too. They're people with families, they're people with loved ones, they're people, they're husbands, they may be wives, um, and they have obligations as well. Um, so you have to be sensitive of that, of evaluating the situation of, does somebody need to step in every other weekend? You know, can the same person work the whole week? Um, so it's just an evaluation process and you're never going to know truly what you need to do unless you sit down and talk to them. Um, never be afraid to, um, question, um, or make a list of things of expectations to hold them accountable. Um, and also... Hold yourself accountable um, that, you know, 
that you have an esca- a schedule and obligations to adhere to, and so do they. Um, when all else fails, um, try, try, and try again. You may fall, you may stumble, but just remember, obstacles are simply um, meant as uh, stepping stones for opportunities. Um, I wouldn't be here where I am today without the obstacles. Obstacles are just are just, are just a platform or um, the diving board into a pond of you know the unknown, the unreachable of goals, dreams, aspirations um, that we have in life like anybody else because our disability doesn't control us, we control our disability. And just like everybody else, we want to be productive members of society. We want to be um, people you can rely on in the workplace. Uh, We want to be uh, good stewards of our time. And, um, you know, we have the same thing that we have the same aspirations that every person without a disability would have. Um, it's just that our journey and our path to reaching our goals and the things that we wish to obtain in life may take a different path or take a different, may may take longer. Um, for me, I have a visual impairment. I have a physical impairment. Um, you know, it just are ways that I have to adapt to get things done. Um, There's just ways that I have to um, make um, changes to uh, complete the same task as anybody else, but I'll eventually get to where I want to be. And I want to encourage you to never give up on your dreams, never give up on your goals, never give up on your aspirations, and most of all, there's no such thing as can't. So go forth, be strong, grip all of the knowledge that you can, learn, educate, and be the person that you strive to be because nothing can stand in your way uh, for reaching your goals and being an advocate. Stand strong and never lose heart Thank you. Next, we have Michael's perspective. I um, might want to unmute the panel this year. My life struggles and celebration is about my new chair. Um, I had trouble getting my chair because the company I used in New Motion was very disorganized. It took three months more than it should and my old chair was hurting. I was very uncomfortable in there. It was hurting my back and the seat was messed up. But I was very thrilled to get my chair. How do you keep good providers? Well, first of all, you have to treat them like human beings. And because most of them have families, you have to communicate well with them. You have to always take into consideration their lives and balance yours with that. And you also have to pay them well. And you have to be a good listener also. How do I get um, personal care providers? Well, I use care.com and indeed, but you also can use... um, your local paper. I used the Lake Region Monitor in my area, and it took me five applicants to find the person that I have for my backup. Um, I'm very thrilled with her, and, and you have to watch out if you use Facebook because you're taking a risk, in my opinion.
Thank you everyone for your wonderful insights. In closing, I just wanted to mention some resources that the panelists have identified as resources that might be useful to you. One is the APD resource directory. This is an online directory that you can search to find resources in your local communities. You can access this directory from APD's website. APD's website is apdcares.org. Another resource is the Family Care Council, and that website is www.fccflorida.org. Another resource identified is Florida Self Advocates Networked, known as Florida Sand. The website is www.flsand.org. Also, for information on the iBudget Waiver, including the iBudget Waiver Handbook, you can go to APD's main webpage, apdcares.org, click on Waivers, and click on iBudget Florida. The direct link is apd.myflorida.com forward slash iBudget. Contact information for the regional offices can be found on APD's website in the Locations tab. This concludes the panel. We thank everyone for their attention and we hope that you found this information useful.